Hello and welcome back to the Nasty Metal Productions channel here at YouTube and welcome to another Album of the Week video. This is episode number 198. Today's episode is all about Killbox 13, the 12th studio album from Overkill. Even though this is their 12th studio album, in actuality the 13th in the album title counts for the band's very first release, the self-titled EP from 1984. Probably the most collectible release from the band, given that the Azra slash Ironworks label founder, David T. Richards, only released about 4,000 copies, which Overkill never received a single penny for. So, Killbox 13 was released back on March 15th of 2003, via Spitfire Records, and since this past Saturday, this has already seen its 20th anniversary. And also given that the band is set to release their 20th studio album titled Scorch on April 14th, the same damn day Metallica releases their 11th studio album, 72 Seasons, so it's all the more fitting to both celebrate and get ourselves ready with the album that saw the band beginning to return to their old sound. So with that, let's begin. After losing Bobby Gustafsson in 1990 and plenty of others, Overkill in the 90s just became Blitz and Dee Dee, going through plenty of different lineup changes. The band was even beginning to experiment with their sound, resulting in the band to go into a more groove metal direction uh, again, uh, as probably a result of whatever of bands like Pantera and so on. Some of the more notable albums that saw this change was with 1997's From the Underground and Below and 1999's Necroshine. By the beginning of the 2000s, starting with Bloodletting and 2000, they would go through with another lineup change. Dave Linsk would replace the late Sebastian Marino, who before joining Overkill was playing with Anvil and only played on Anvil's 1991 album, Worth the Wait. And his debut with Overkill was on 1996, The Killing Kind, just to kind of uh, bring up that sort of fact there. Then by 2001, Derek Taylor would join the fold, thus turning Overkill into a quintet, making 2003's Killbox 13, Overkill's first album as a quintet. So, with Killbox 13, this album at least consists a total of 10 tracks, and it's clocks in at the length of 50 minutes and 22 seconds. So, these 10 tracks are, beginning with Devil by the Tail, Damned, No Lights, The One, Crystal Clear, The Sound of Dying, until I die, struck down, unholy, and then finally ending with I Rise. So there you go. There's your 10 tracks. Now, I'm not that familiar with most of Overkill's 90s output, nor even their releases from the 2000s, at least for the most part, most of their releases from the 2000s. What I am familiar with that's post Years of Decay, because I haven't even checked out Horoscope, which I know that's a a complete crime there, but still, just to kind of bring up the albums I'm familiar with for the most part are From the Underground and Below, Necroshine, and of course everything from Ironbound up to about 2019's The Wings of War. But, it wasn't until about several weeks ago where I ended up checking out Killbox 13 for the very first time. I had always heard mixed things about this one, some either love this album, or some either just don't. But, I always heard that this saw the band begin to make a return to their thrash roots. Now, not a full return, but close. Now, I must confess, on my first listen of this album, I can say that I enjoyed it, but not nearly as much as the output from Ironbound up to now. Because as much as I can hear the presence of that thrash sound that's pretty much um, starting to kind of creep back in here, 
that ultimately would make its full return on an effort like Ironbound and the Electric Age, there still is that looming modern groove sound. But it's less present here as it was on an album like Necroshine. But as I would continue to give this album repeated listens, the more this album grows on me. And now it's clicked to such a degree that I now really like this album. It's a gem. The songs that have that 90s overkill aspect to them are in the songs like Damned, Crystal Clear, and Until I Die. Damned has that slight punk vibe to it, but it's also prevalent in the lyrics, which are written in that 90s, we're trying to be angry to stay fresh with the kids kind of vibe. <laughs> uh, I, but still, I think it kind of works for what they're going for. Until I Die is a slower, dark, brooding, somber song that is built around heavy riffs that kind of uh, borders on doom here. But then there is a song like Crystal Clear, kind of groove metal, but more in the exhorter style, as in The Law. But this song ends up being an underdog highlight, because this song really picks up towards the end when it just completely goes into thrash mode. It's a gem on this album. It is such a great track. Then there are the more mid-paced, kind of classic metal sounding songs here. Like The One, which is built around infectious hooks. Bobby Blitz gives an awesome performance. It's catchy as hell and is an immediate favorite for me for this album. It is just so good. Very memorable and I can just, can still... Can again that the lyrics and the chorus till stays in my head to the point to where once in a while it will still pop up. It is just that infectious of a song. Really good. But the album's strong points are in the songs that sees the band returning to that old school thrash sound. Though again, being given that sort of modern kind of sound filter that would become way way more prevalent on albums from like Ironbound up to about 2019's The Wings of War or even with their newest album that's coming out, Scorched. Again, but let's take in songs like Devil by the Tail, which combines the 90's groove sound with their classic brand of grinding thrash. Then there's Unholy, which is full throttle, foot stuck to the gas pedal, style thrash metal. It is just great, great, great stuff. Then of course I Rise, the song that ends the album, it's just relentless, but has hooks and pacing. But my favorite of the returning thrashers is Struck Down, which reminds me of a kill on command off of Feel the Fire. Even this song incorporates an Iron Maiden-like part in the middle section of this beast. What a song! It is damn good. There are plenty of cool songs here. But some of the ones that I mentioned are the ones that stand out to me. This is a pretty good album. You really were seeing the band beginning to transition from the 90s groove based sound to the full on thrash assault that would come full force on 2010's mammoth album, Iron Bound. But Killbox 13 is where the transition began. So, happy 20 year anniversary. If you're one who hadn't yet clicked with this album, give it another chance. If you're one who has either always or has never enjoyed this album, you know what to do. You can leave your thoughts in the comment section below. But if you've never took a crack at Killbox 13, give it a try. Or unless you're not that familiar with Overkill and are curious to check them out, because you see that they got a new album coming out and you're wondering where to start, always start with the early stuff. There is a box set that was released about a year ago. It's decently priced. Grab that and go from there. So with that, this is Terry Thrasher saying I'm out, and I'll see you all later. Take care, everyone.